Hello and a warm welcome to episode 8 of Stu's Wrestling Podcast. My guest this week is none other than the Pirate Prince, Joey Marcus. Joey is a young talent hailing from right here in North Wales. He's a contestant on the Britannia Wrestling Promotions Alpha Gen Tournament, which is taking place just up the road from where I live. It was lovely to get Joey on as a younger talent, getting a younger talent's perspective on the business, what he likes in the business in terms of promotions, styles and matches, among other things. It was great to get perspective on his training and how tough training is for these guys. So, here it is, episode 8 with the Pirate Prince, Joey Marcus, on Stu's Wrestling Podcast. Enjoy, my faithful listeners, enjoy. It's my pleasure and honour for episode 8 of Stu's Wrestling Podcast to have the Pirate Prince, Joey Marcus, on the line today. How's it going, Joey? Ahoy, Scallywag, how are you, buddy? Not bad, mate, not bad. I've got a fair few questions to get through here, Uh, so uh, hopefully... We can uh, have a nice interview. Uh, when did you first start watching wrestling, Joey? Like on a constant basis? Or... Yeah, yeah, whichever you, yeah, you can answer or however you want to answer. Well, I, I don't really watch it anymore. Right. Because of obvious productivity and creative in the Big E. But I probably started watching just before WrestleMania when Alberto Del Rio won the... Royal Rumble, the forty man. I think that was two thousand and eleven. It was, mate, because I was out in I was out at WrestleMania twenty seven that year. So you bob on. Yeah, he. That was I, the first ever thing I watched was the forty man Royal Rumble, and then I sort of just got hooked on there. Uh, who so did... basically, my passion for wrestling came from the Royal Rumble match. Right. Okay. Is that is that your favorite event? I, I wouldn't really say I have a favourite event. Like, there's just certain matches that I enjoy. Like, I, I don't base the show on the whole event. Right, okay. Yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Um, who did you enjoy watching growing up? Well, because of the time period when I was watching, because I only started watching wrestling while late, it's got a BCM punk because I started watching around the time with the pipe bomb. And whatnot, and then when he started to get that push, so like that's always going to be like a standout thing for me because that was when I first started watching, of course. Okay, okay, yeah, it was a good, good time. It was a good time. It's a shame he's not there anymore. Uh, I'm skeptical that he'll come back into the business, if I'm honest, but maybe we might see him at AEW or somewhere. But it was a good time, it was a good time, 2011. Which events did you enjoy watching? Uh, Probably next year's WrestleMania because it's pirate themed. Yes, yeah, of course. Tampa Bay. Um, the event that I've probably enjoyed the most, I'm going to say either Money in the Bank 2011, because yeah. obviously CM Punk was a big thing for me back in the day, or I, I quite enjoy Survivor Series events and Money in the Bank. Like stipulation matches, like yeah. gimmick matches. They're they're probably the best things for me. Like events, like there was stuff like Fatal Four Way, but that wasn't really that pleasing. Like stuff with cells, extreme rules, stuff like that. That's what you gravitate to. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, Joey, when did you begin training, and where did you begin training? Well. I've been training in a few places now, but I initially started off with Britannia Wrestling Promotions, who are based in Preston. Their training school, the North Wales Wrestling Dojo, is based in Rill. Um, they have training sessions on Thursdays and Sundays. Um, I, it started off that I was, I was going to go, but I was just too scared. And my girlfriend at the time, who's now my fiance, so she's sailing with me all the time. Um, She sort of forced me to go, and I am so grateful that she did. Otherwise, I wouldn't be in the situation where I am now with all the opportunities that I've got. What was holding you back, Joey? Initially, what what was the issues about going to train? It was probably just nerves. Right, okay. Um, 
because separate to wrestling, I'm a very nervous and shy person. But as soon as I get in that ring, like I'm just a complete different person. I'm so confident. I'm so arrogant. Like it's just it's all business work while you're in there. Okay. How hard? How hard is training? Because obviously I've I've always said I was going to train, but I've never took it up. How how hard is it? Um, my first session, I thought it was going to be quite easy. Um, because obviously it was my first session; they didn't throw me in the deep end. But then, after a few weeks of going, I was picking up very very quickly. So I got a few opportunities early on. Yeah. Um, started to branch out early on, which was good for me. And then the more it goes on, it gets difficult in the first year because it's, it's tough on your body and you you feel like you should give up, but I've got that drive and passion to make something of it. So I, I fought through all the pain, all the agony, just so I could carry on doing this to entertain people. How how hard is it running the ropes and stuff? Because I always hear about like rope rush and stuff like that. You know, when people first set foot in the ring, how bad is that on the body? I've always wanted to know. Um, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Like it, it didn't really affect me. I've had a few rope burns, but because yeah. my adrenaline's rushing while I'm in there, like I don't really feel it. Right. It's more worse when you go home. Your adrenaline's all low. Yeah. You get into bed and your back's in pieces. Yeah. Um, how how long uh, did you train before your first match? Oh, um, I think first match on a show, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yep, that's yep. We'll go go with that. Um, probably around a year, I want to say. Yeah, sounds about right. From obviously when I've had previous guests on uh, who are wrestlers, because I get other personalities in the business, they set, tend to say a year. Maybe a bit longer before you get in for your first match. Yeah, I think it was like a year and a year and a half. Yeah. Did you feel confident at that point going in? No. Not at all. I, no. I did not. I did not feel confident whatsoever. It was a free show, which I didn't get paid for. Obviously, get some experience. My uh, friend recommended me, so I went down there. Got put into a tag team match. Um, I got choke slammed off the top rope. Um, I was with someone there who I also trained with, so I knew a bit of his stuff, which made it a bit easier for me. Yeah. But apart from that, my first time going out wrestling new people who I never met before, I, I was very, very nervous. Uh, which companies uh, did you and do you wrestle for as well? That's what I would like to like to find out yeah. next. I there is a tournament going on with Britannia Wrestling Promotions, who are my home company, the company which Joey was born in. Yeah, and they've got their Alpha Gen tournament on the twenty eighth of July. Yeah, um, I'm going to be a part of that, becoming a more permanent roster member for them. Um, I'm a fixture on Fusion Pro Wrestling in Clanfechan and Ta- uh, and Clandino. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, lost out on their Welsh Championship. Okay, who did um, you? Just tactics and interference. Who are you, who are you up against in that one, Joey? Uh, for the title, I was yeah. against Pastor Everett Teague. Right. Um, he is. He calls other people the sinner, but himself, he is a very big sinner. He finds every way possible to cheat, just to come out with that win. But it works for him, so. I can't complain. Maybe I should look at them sort of tactics as well. And then there's also um, someone new. I've been going down training with world of sport legend Marty Jones. Nice. After he came down to Fusion for a seminar. Yeah. I jumped on the chance. I'm sure you did, mate. He he, um, called me and one other aside and said like he wants us to come down there. He wants us to train with him. He sees something in us. So, of course, we went down to his school um, and then he offered for us to be on one of his shows that he does. And 
he was going to put me and this other person who he's seen in the seminar together. And he decided, no, he wants us to team up against the Billingtons. Yes. And I'm sure you don't need any explanation who they are. I, I don't, but if you, want to, if you want to relay it to the listeners, mate, you go ahead. Because yeah. obviously some people uh, might not know who, you know, going by the surname, they might know his wrestling name. Yeah, the nephews of the Dynamite Kid. Yeah. And uh, one of the fastest rising tag teams on the independent circuit. They've been everywhere at the moment. It won't be long until they get signed up by someone. I, if I remember right, they're only 16 and 18. My, it's unbelievable. I've seen bits and bobs. Obviously, you've seen a lot. Uh, so that's cool to hear that they're you know taking it by storm. They are. From what I've heard, they're not. They've got a bit of a bad reputation from the outside because they look grumpy and whatnot. I I think it's more they're serious. They're going in there to get the job done, and you can tell that in the ring. They're hard hitting, fast paced. That they're going out there for the win. Joey, just to go back to your persona, how did you come up with the pirate gimmick? Oh, um, I I actually had a few gimmicks beforehand. Um, obviously, I've not been in here long, so it, they were more brainstorming. There was my, my first ever one. I was everyone's typical. Oh, I'm a cool, cocky, arrogant guy. I wear sunglasses. Look at me. That was my first gimmick. My second one was an Alice in Wonderland gimmick. And then the company who I trained with, I completely forgot about. And then they had a tag team who were actually the tag team champions at the time. So I don't know how I forgot about them. And they're, they are Wonderland. So I thought I, I don't want to be copying someone who's in that company. And then I obviously... I reached the Pirate Prince finally and there was a few complications at the start because I used to call myself the captain and there was someone called Steve Valentino, great wrestler, great athlete, great performer and he um, he was already called the captain which I never heard of him before but now we have a good friendship and he helped guide me into the Pirate Prince because he was already a pirate character down in the Midlands. And I, I wanted to be a pirate, but I didn't want to be the typical comedy act because I, I, I can be funny, but I'm also serious as well. I'm still going into that ring to get the victory. So over time, it's developed. I've got the pirate party going on. I did have the pirate search party, which was looking for the pirate and whatnot, where will I show up? And yeah. then when I get there, we have the pirate party, which is fun. Uh, at Britannia, there was in, I was actually in a number one contenders match for the Welsh title. Uh, unfortunately, got eliminated straight off the bat because it was a six man, uh, six man elimination match. I came out first, got eliminated first, which was unfortunate, but the crowd were chanting pirate party and that's when I was like god I, I can make something of this I'm I'm recognized people actually like the character people actually like me and then I've just creative wise I've got a few things coming up which I will I will not reveal I will nope leave them sitting came close to, close and, to your chest yeah but the next few months should be busy for the uh, pirate prince who on the independent scene would you like to face? I mean, like the UK independent scene. Oh, um, there's a few people. Uh, probably top of my list would be either Sonna Derson, Screwface Ahmed, and probably David Starr. They're like peak. Okay, okay, yeah. I saw David Starr last year. Obviously, I'd seen a lot of video, uh, but I went to a TNT show. He's he's incredible. What a talent. And obviously, heard a lot about Sonny as well. So, yeah, no, good good list, that is. Uh, which companies do you follow globally? I know you don't follow WWE, but do you follow any others? And that can be 
international or national? Last year, I used to follow quite a few. At the moment, I keep updated with New Japan. And AEW have just started, so jumping on that bandwagon a bit, just checking what it's about. But really, I I I. Read about the companies, see what's going on. I just don't tend to watch them because ever since I got into this, it's 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 a bit like magic. Like you don't do the same trick tw- twice, and once you learn how to do it, it's not really it doesn't give you the same feeling. Yeah, that's why I enjoy like the gimmicky matches because like you you don't really know what's going to happen compared to like a normal one on one match. On. Uh, episode of Monday Night Raw. What would get you back into WWE? What do you want to see that they're not doing? Obviously, because you've switched off from it. What would you like them to do? What ideas have you got that would make it more watchable? Um, probably sign Joey Marcus. That'll be quite entertaining. <laughs> uh, right, okay. What would you like to see them do, though, with the product? There's obviously something missing for you. I think they just need a better creative team it's not even creative team they have to let the guys have freedom because you can tell when they're cutting their promos that they don't really want to be there um i i seen a clip of the kevin owens promo from this tuesday yeah. on smackdown it was incredible it it just reminded me like i, I watched that episode because of that promo that i seen online yeah because it felt like the CM Punk promo back in 2011, which, which I may go back to later on because that's what got me into it. Yeah. So they, they are looking up. It looks like they're having freedom. Yeah. But I'm not sure if that's just them trying to repeat a storyline. Owens. Uh, Owens. I, I, I did tune in because of what what happened, but Kevin Owens is a top, top performer, so... I'm not surprised I did get a bit hooked onto that episode. There's no way there's no way he was scripted for that the other night, in my opinion. And and that's what they've got to do. Uh, yeah, they, they want everyone to go word for word. But yeah, it doesn't work. I, you can you can see through it like it, it, I've watched it for years, you know, and uh, yeah, let them do let them be creative themselves. Yeah, d- d- let them know what you want to work towards, of course. Like don't just let them go oh, I now want to compete for the World Heavyweight Championship. Make them, like, give, give them the storyline, what they're going to be working towards, and then just let them say whatever they want. Like, that'll make it so much better. I get you. I get you on that one. Do you reckon uh, Do you reckon Paul Heyman and Bischoff can turn both brands around? I, it depends on how much they are actually involved, because at the moment, from what I've heard, I may be wrong they're just uh, like on-screen directors, is right. that right? I think, I think to a certain extent, I've, I've also heard they haven't been hands-on yet, but people were uh, slating Raw, I'd seen online, uh, but I have heard that um, Heyman hasn't actually took the reins properly yet, and I don't think Bischoff has either. I think they're overseeing it. Yeah. I mean, how do, how do we know? You hear all sorts, don't you, on the internet? But uh, yeah, I think they need a bit of time. They need time to, it's not going to happen overnight, is it? Yeah, I, I think if they do get control, um, Raw will be phenomenal with Paul Heyman. Uh, I'm not sure with Bischoff. Um, obviously, I didn't watch WCW and whatnot because I was born just before it finished. Uh, I was born in 2000. That finished in 2001, 2002. Yeah, it was March, so, March 2001. Yeah. yeah, so I was just, I had just turned one at that time, so it's, I don't, I don't think he'll run WWE downhill and sink them, but I don't think that it will last too long with him in charge then. I get I get you. I had heard of a few people, the reason um, Bischoff's gone to Smackdown is to do with the Fox TV deal because he obviously dealt. He's very good with the TV, you know, companies and what have you. Because uh, I thought it would have been the other way around. I thought Heyman would have gone back to SmackDown like years before, uh, but it's because yeah. they they put Bischoff in that position because of the new contract with Fox. You know, obviously he'd be able to speak to their execs, won't he? 
with targets and stuff. So it's, so it's not just from like storyline standpoint. It's it's about this new TV deal that they got in the autumn. That's what it's all about. Um, rap wrestling is a business. They need to make their money. Which uh, which current wrestlers on the scene do you enjoy watching? That can be you know UK based. It can be uh, across the pond in America, Japan. It, what which wrestlers do you gravitate to? Um, well, Kevin Owens, uh, which we just spoke about. Yeah. Uh, I I go back and watch some of CM Punk's matches. Um, Hangman at Adam Page, I watched his match at All In with Joey Janela, and a lot of people have sort of forgot about that match because of, like, at the end of it, you had Joey Ryan with all the... Uh, Massive inflatable penises. <laughs> so a, a lot of people have forgot like that Hangman actually won that match. But I, I watched that in September or August last year, whenever it was. And like I watched some of his stuff then from Ring of Honor. No idea how he didn't win the Ring of Honor Championship. He but, is phenomenal in that ring. I I thought he was I thought he was going to go over against Jeff Cobb for the TV title. Uh, but yeah, I'm the same as you. He should have had the belt. But I think ideally now facing Jericho and winning it would be would be amazing for him if he becomes first champion. I think Jericho will put Adam Page over. Yeah, I I'm sort of worried that they're going to put Jericho over because oh Jericho he is. Amazing. He has done so well to stay relevant at almost 50 years old. But he he needs to put Hangman over. Otherwise, it's just you're giving former WWE guys your your main title. Like, if you watched um, All Not All Out, uh, Double or Nothing, I, I can't remember the figure, but there was so many WWE talent on that show, yeah, like, yeah. whether it was working backstage or whatnot. Yeah. Like, you sort of don't want them to be, like, a TNA and just sign up all the WWE releases. Yeah. There'll be people who will work in AEW who can make it work, like Sean Spears, completely underused. John Moxley, from what I've seen, especially in his New Japan match with um, Juice, like... It shows that they have the ability, but they're just not being used right, which also goes down to not letting the performers have creative freedom and whatnot. That's why I'm enjoying what I'm doing now, because I've got so much freedom to do yeah. whatever I want. Like, with the Fusion title, that was organic. Yeah. The crowd grew onto me, and like after the match, even though I lost, like, they still, like, usually the announcer says, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up one more time for Joey Marcus, crowd clap. But even after I was lo- even after I lost, even when, before the uh, announcer said that, like, they were still clapping. How so, do you like, feel, I, how do you feel when they react to you like that? Well, of course, I, I can only feel, like, positive, like I said. Yeah. Uh, with Britannia as well, when they were chanting for the Pirate Party, people are going to like you. Like The pirate thing is sort of, it's easy to make people like you initially, but it's harder to keep them entertained because they think, oh, it's just a pirate, It's he's, he's just going to do this little funny thing and then lose. But it, it's not that I am on this pirate search party, I'm going to be constantly searching for treasure and I want all these fans, all these members of the crew there with me every step of the way. And I, I take them with me everywhere. Like I keep everyone updated on my social media. Yeah. So it's not just my journey, it's also them as well. Absolutely, yeah. I if they're cheering for you doing something right and like you say, it's just about keeping yourself Keeping the character going, isn't it? Yeah, keep, keep, keeping it relevant and keep people yeah. wanting more. Yeah, that's that's the key thing, I suppose, as a performer. Obviously, I'm not a wrestler, but going from what you're saying, I bet it's uh, I bet it's nice. 
having the reaction from the crowd. Um, just going back to the Alpha Gen, what is the format? Is it a knockout or are you in a league format? Um, with the Alpha Gen, I am. It's a eight man. I want to say right. Okay, an eight man tournament. Who's in your bracket? Um, I'm trying to think now. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, I can't remember how many it is. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an eight man. Yeah. And there is in my first round match, I am against someone who I went to school with. Um, the same lad from the dojo, the same lad who got scouted by Marty Jones. Right. Okay. From. North Wales Wrestling Dojo and yeah. against Dougie Matthews, which okay. has been revealed on the Alpha Gen tournament page via Britannia. Yeah, so it's gone full circle then. Yeah. From the school days. He is the lad who I teamed up with when I went down to Marty Jones. Right, okay. Is he? What's, what sort of style does he wrestle? If you don't mind me asking. He is a brawler. He is a businessman. Also, similar to the past, he will do anything it takes to get the victory. What will you do to combat the brawling? What have you got in place? I, I, I can only give it my best. He is one of the best lads I've seen in the ring. Like, even though he like hides away sometimes, like as soon as he sees that little opening, he'll strike. He's like a snake. It's insane what he can do in the ring. So. I'm worried, but I'm also confident that I can get past him and then potentially get past the next round and then enter the final and win the Alpha Gen Championship. How long is it? How long? Sorry, I keep jumping in. How long is it uh, running the tournament? How many events is it on? It's a one night tournament. Oh right, okay, okay. I didn't know whether he was like spreading it out. It is a one night tournament. Yeah, and um, it's. It's to crown, obviously, the inaugural Alpha Gen champion. But on the previous uh, Britannia shows, um, we have had the Alpha Gen, which has been announced, and it's starting to develop. Yeah, gaining traction. So, yeah. Like, hopefully, it comes out with, like, a full Alpha Gen show. And you did mention TNT, so I'm guessing you have heard of Ignition. Yeah, yeah. I know what, yeah, I keep uh, keep my finger on the pulse with the Liverpool promotion, yeah. Hopefully it ends up like that and we can have our own separate show. Yeah. Um, I know that may be potentially in the works, but you've also got to think. We have people on our show like Zag Gibson, James Drake, yeah. Saxon Huxley. We've got WWE NXT UK guys. So we are very... Lucky to have them, but like we're also introducing the next stage of British wrestling, so finding that mix will be really good for the whole of the UK circuit. Yeah, of course. I think like if you say if they do a separate brand, yeah, I think it'd work. I think and yeah, I could see that happening. Um, who out of the ones you've just spoken about, who do you idolise the most from the NXT UK um, roster who, who come over this end? Um, probably Johnny Saint. He um, he lives around here. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I've spoke to him in seminars. I've spoke to him out at shows. He um, he actually lives very close by, or he used to. I'm I'm not sure now. He's also on the next Alpha Gen show, uh, hosting it. Yeah, I did see. Yeah, uh, what advice? I like the name made for himself what advice has he given you then sorry what advice which you've taken away that you can remember well at the seminar that we had with him um, it was a lot of NXT performance center drills and like he makes you see how difficult it is like being with Johnny and talking to Johnny, like I spoke to him at shows as well, which he like gives advice. He um just got double knee replacement surgery. 
and he was at our last show on walking sticks. Uh, crutches, sorry, I completely forgot the name of them. And um, just the attitude he has, like, it shows, like, anything can relate to wrestling. Like, as long as you love it, then there's no issues. Like, he was, he had crutches and he was still there. He was still at a little show in yeah. Press that in. Yeah. And just, it's, it's about the passion. Like, it's not always about the money. Of course, the money is a bonus, but having Johnny Saint there in a little pub is, it's insane. Yeah. Like, it's, it's all about the passion and the love you have for it. It's invaluable. If you don't love it, why are you actually doing it? Why are you putting your body yeah. on the line for a bit of money? That's not going to last forever. Right, Joey. The Pirate Prince. Have you got anything to say to the listeners? Any, wo- any words of wisdom? Uh, make sure you like my page, Joey Marcus, Pirate Prince on Facebook. Okay. Because I'm a very cool and active pirate. Um, and any shows that you can get down to, to support or be a part of. I, there's a, lot of like, a lot of people on my Facebook will, will share and like the posts and say like they're going and they don't turn up. Just make, if you can, go to a wrestling show. Because I, I, I'm a big fan of football, but the adrenaline that you get from just being in the crowd at a wrestling show is insane. It's so fun to be a part of as well. We have so many different personalities rather than just kicking the ball down the wing, crossing, scoring. There's stuff from comedy to sadness to celebrations. The emotions you get are insane. Like It's just like you're out on a boat, stormy seas, and it's rocking everywhere. It's so fun. And if you can, Chan Joey Marcus, get him on that show because I need promotion as well. Wait, have you got a Twitter handle? Uh, I don't have... Twitter, but I've got Instagram. Right, okay. Which is uh, Pirate Prince Joey Marcus or Joey Marcus Pro Wrestler. It's one of them. I, I don't know. I, I just share on it. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for coming on, Joey. Thank you for talking to me. It's been fun. So I don't feel like you need to walk the plank because you've been a good little chap. Oh, I'm happy I've not had to walk the plank. I'm th- thank- Thankfully... Uh, nice one. Big thank you to the Zangwills for supplying me with the tune New Heights in the intro. So that's Zangwills, New Heights, get streaming, get listening, great band, my cousin's band and uh, Chuffed a Bit so they've allowed me to use their song, fantastic. <laughs>